Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill. This time we've got something for you beginners out there in the electronics world. Uh, we're going to have a look at a little kit which I spotted on eBay. Um, here's a, a screen grab of the, um, the actual item that I bought. As you can see just over four UK pounds and that includes postage. Um, second class postage here in the UK which is about um, three or four days depending on on where you are um, so in incredibly cheap and and uh, a nice little project um, if you're new to electronics gives you some practice in component identification also soldering and it does produce something at the end that actually actually does something so it's potentially a good project for, for kids to engage their enthusiasm for practical electronics now let's be serious about this this is not a serious metal detector it's a bit of fun um, and that's exactly why I bought it because I think it's potentially quite a nice way uh, to make something cheaply it gives you a bit of practice allows you the feeling of um, producing something and getting it to work and then hopefully um, learning a little bit along the way as well as getting some experience in building so let's start by first of all having a quick look at um, what the kit is and then we'll have a look at uh, the paperwork that comes with it which quite frankly um, is good providing you're a native Chinese reader which I'm not so thank you Google Translate uh, for getting me out of a mess okay this is how the kit arrives just in a plastic bag uh, with some instructions uh, which we'll uh, take a look at in a minute and a few components and uh, this PCB which has got the uh, the, the coil sort of built in as part of the circuit board. So I'll get the parts out and um, we'll have a look what we've got. Okay, here's the contents of the bag. Um, circuit uh, I'll talk about uh, in a while. Um, we've got a lot of Chinese text here. Hopefully Google's going to help us with that one. Um, we've got a buzzer, a terminal block, several transistors, a switch, a couple of LEDs, a pot, and one or two capacitors. And the circuit board is double-sided it looks all right actually it's nice and clean and on the other side it is indeed screen printed so you could probably assemble that with them um, uh, out reference to the uh, the instructions so um yeah that's all right for for less than five pounds delivered so uh, now we'll go and have a look at um at what uh, this chinese text uh, says with the assistance of uh, google translate okay here's uh scan of the uh, little scrap of paper that came with the kit um, the circuit is uh, uh, doesn't require any translation that makes complete sense and underneath uh, is the Google Translate version of the the build of materials that uh, is printed in uh, in what I presume is Chinese text um, now the circuit itself uh, we've got an oscillator formed by transistor uh, Q1 and feedback occurs between coil L2 and L1. Um, now, as we've seen when uh, we hold the, the coil that's attached to the oscilloscope next to the coil, oscillation is happening all the time. Um, and VR1 sets the threshold at which the oscillation is sufficient to um, allow that to pass through transistor 2 and then be amplified by uh, transistor 3. Uh, and go out to the to the speaker and also to to switch on the LED that's my understanding of how the circuit works anyway it's extremely crude um, but uh, hopefully it'll uh, do the job now the only other bit of information that came on the other side of the paper was again more Chinese text so I'm grateful to Google Translate for being able to translate it rather well and even put it back on the same paper so it looks like it's uh, um, a proper translation and uh, this is a bit of a description um, that uh, d describes how, thing, uh, how things are done um, always remember that when you're reading this um, Chinese stuff uh, they refer to welding they do of course mean soldering uh, presumably that's a similar word in, in Chinese I don't know but I've come across that on more than one occasion so there we go those are the um, comprehensive instructions uh, fortunately the circuit board is um, rather nicely done so we don't need to worry too much about that 
So let's um, let's now uh, have a look at uh, the components before we uh, make a start on assembly. Okay, I don't propose to um, film the actual um, assembly of the circuit board. I'm sure you've seen that uh, countless times on videos. Um, but I am going to start with resistors, uh, capacitors, switches, uh, and all the uh, non-delicate components, i.e. not the semiconductors, and then I'll put the semiconductors uh, in last. So uh, I'll come back when uh, I've got the circuit board assembled. Here's the completed uh, circuit board then, um, with all the components. I've cleaned uh, the lower side with some IPA just to get rid of the flux, as it is quite corrosive. Um, and so just a few comments about the um, component placement. Um, it's relatively straightforward. I've, I've put all the resistors and the capacitors uh, tied up against the circuit board, as you can see. Um, but the transistors, uh, I've actually left them a little bit further away. They don't preserve it any higher than any of the other components. And I've done that just to be a little bit, um, a little bit of component sympathy, um, so that there wasn't uh, too much heat transmitted up the uh, the legs of the transistors. So there are two different types of transistor and uh, here's a few close-ups of the board so you can see there's NPN and PNP and here's some uh, pictures of uh, me just checking those. I always check the components before I put them in and also I even measure the resistance of the resistors even though it was relatively straightforward on here to see what was what um, and one thing I really do like is that uh, the circuit board is actually marked with the um, ceramic capacitor uh, numbering system. So it's really easy to spot the 222 and the 104. Uh, again, here's some more close-ups for you to look at. So you can see uh, uh, the arrangement of the components. So yeah, uh, probably took me about 15-20 uh, minutes to um, put it together. And the other final comment to make is regarding the the, the buzzer or speaker as it's shown on the circuit diagram um, there's a sticker on the front uh, here's a picture uh, and it does have the positive marked on there uh, if you do remove that sticker it's also marked on the top of the component itself uh, but should you be struggling the longer of the two leads is the positive uh, but that's probably the only thing that's um, just worth noting so next thing to do is to um, get some power applied and um, see what uh, what happens okay I've got power applied to the board now switch the on switch on uh, in the connector it says supply between 3 to 5 volts so I'm supplying a nominal uh, 4 volts and uh, adjusting this pot um, causes the speaker to, to oscillate or not and there we go and as I increase that eventually it will stop oscillating and I'm guessing that's the sensitivity threshold. So I'm going to try and find a, a point where it's just just switching off there. Okay. So I've got a metallic object here, the screwdriver. So if I move that across the coil, as you can see, we do indeed get metal detection. Now I'm holding that about a centimetre from the board. And to be quite honest, as it was less than five pounds delivered, I don't expect this to be a uh, world-beating quality metal detector. Not that I would know that anyway, I don't know anything about them. Um, but uh, I bought it mainly because I thought it was an interesting and potentially useful beginner's project. And as you can see, it does indeed detect metal. So, um, yeah, I think that's uh, working uh, quite well, really. Okay, next thing, next thing I'm going to do is just to investigate on the oscilloscope um, what sort of frequency is being um, being used uh, to uh, uh, on this uh, coil for the for the magnetic field. So uh, I'll get set up for that and come back when I'm ready. Okay, so I've got uh, the uh, oscillator is actually running, um, and uh, I've now taken a oscilloscope probe and I've just got a little uh, inductor I found in the junk box. Uh, to act as a detector 
as you can see the metal bots of that do indeed trigger the detector so I'm just going to lay it there and you can see we are getting something on the on the scope <coughs> excuse me um, uh, now it's oh, clearly the oscillator isn't very stable but if we do stop the oscilloscope we do actually get a um, fairly uh, reasonable sine wave now the scope doesn't measure frequency when it's uh, on run stop mode but if I pop on a couple of cursors and just uh, set them up like so to measure the, um, the wavelength or the period it very usefully uh, tells me on here the uh, the delta t if you can see there in the middle line 1 over delta uh, sorry 1 over delta x it's coming up at about well 304.9 kilohertz so it's about 305 kilohertz is the the frequency being um, generated by the oscillator and um, uh, that's what uh, what the scope is uh, picking up as you can see as you move away the strength increases Uh, when, it, when it does trigger the speaker, it doesn't do anything for the waveform, makes it a bit noisier. But uh, there you go. So that's the uh, the mode of operation of the scope. Okay, well that's the uh, metal detector kit. Um, nice, uh, easy project actually for for somebody like me who's had a bit of experience with electronics. If you're new to it. Um, I suspect uh, that's quite a, an enjoyable little project to build. I enjoyed putting it together anyway. So um, that's, that's, as I say, potentially quite useful. So uh, look it up on eBay and for what it costs, um, you probably can't go wrong. So I hope you've enjoyed that. And if you're an electronic expert, you probably haven't watched this far anyway. Look forward to seeing you on the next video.